I don't live in Korea by myself anymore, so I'm not sitting uh, just getting off work when TMS comes on in the morning. So <laughs> I'm just not oh. up to date on it anymore. Well, it's hard once you're not once you get <laughs> once you get behind on that one. Well, it's like DTNS, I guess. You get a little behind. You got a lot of catch up to do. His show's shorter though, so it's a little easier to catch up. Well, you know, you know, Tom came out with the uh, the headlines only show right after I caught up on DTNS. So I appreciate that, Tom. <laughs> Thanks. I, good looking out there, buddy. I was waiting. I was waiting for you to catch up. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, what chat room's been waiting for. They've been waiting for this right here. Hmm. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 100 for Wednesday, the 2nd of November, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we've got like, we've got podcast, Diamond Club, and Frog Pant royalty in the house tonight. Mr. Scott Johnson and Mr. Tom Merritt. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Oh man, Tom, I don't know about you, but I'm doing great because... A, there's really good baseball on tonight. And two, uh, I guess B is really what I meant to say. You're coming out here tomorrow to Anaheim, and I'm going to see you, and you're going to to hang out. So podcast today, hang out tomorrow. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, that's a good point. Like, we, we get to do this awesome podcast with these guys, and I'm going to get to yeah. see Scott tomorrow. And I really shouldn't focus on the fact that uh, the, the team that I hate most in the world just broke a 100 plus year streak. Like I, I, you know, I've got to get over it. I've just got to let it go. Yeah. yeah Tom, yeah. Uh, exactly. How empty do you feel inside right now? With, you know, it's a really good question. Um, if I were a quarry that was out of granite and then was also hollowed out to become a nuclear waste dump that was never fulfilled because Congress rescinded the authorization. That's about how empty I feel. Wow. Wow. Kent, um, as, as a lifelong Cubby fan, how are you feeling right now? How is your quarry? Oh, man. This is amazing. I got I to gotta say it out loud. Cubs win! Cubs win! Cubs win! So excited. Like I've been waiting uh, for this for my entire life, as have every... Cubs fan, <laughs> I think. Yeah, every Cubs fan currently alive has been waiting for this literally their whole life. <laughs> uh, so good. I'm, I'm so happy for the Cubs. Uh, Look, I'm so incredibly happy that I've got two of my favorite podcasters on the show. And this is episode 100. So I'm excited. I'm pumped tonight. I am happy for you. <laughs> I'm not, not even joking. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a, the, the, the slightest spark of light in the depths of uh, Tom Merritt's heart right now. <laughs> Is how happy you are on this podcast. Is at least you're happy. And my friend Ned and Nick, and I, I got all kinds of people that I met in college who are Cubs fans. They can't help it. You guys were born that way. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Tom, St. Louis, St. Louis will have their chance again. Don't worry about it. Your Cardinals oh, yeah. aren't dead. They're yeah, absolutely. Fine. I mean, my, le fine. my least favorite thing about... Uh... <laughs> my least favorite thing about baseball is the fact that it's going to come on in like two more weeks, right? Like preseason starts in two weeks. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as the NHL, but yeah, I know. I hear yeah. it. I, I mean, NASCAR has got like a two week, two week uh, pause in the middle of its, you know, in between its yeah, seasons yeah. as well. So that's, and that's just a yellow flag. That's, they don't even actually. Stop right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they're, they're literally just driving from, uh, from Homestead, Miami up to Daytona. That's what the, that's right, what the interchange right. is there. For that's, NASCAR. that's the down season. Yeah. <laughs> Pack your shit. Let's get up there. Um, hey, Kent, man, how was your week, dude? Uh, you know, busy, super busy. Uh, my son is trying out for basketball, so yeah. we've been doing a lot of stuff with that. Oh, I know that uh, pain, man. My daughter's trying out for the same thing, and holy crap. Like, having teenagers trying out for sports. Scott, you know yeah. this probably. I mean, I'm sure you've got uh, you got three kids floating around. Tom, he's he's decided not to go the kid route, but, um, you know, he's, he's the smart <laughs> one of us all, really. <laughs> yeah, he's the his dog. His dogs will, you know. I, I've seen Air Bud. I know it's possible. Yeah, I've yeah. seen those documentary. Tom, you ever right. considered taking uh, the got... dogs out for fly ball? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> we had we had author Margaret Weiss on last year, and she, her dogs are into this thing called fly ball, which is like, like a sport for dogs. And I had never heard of it <clears> until <throat> she told us about it. Yeah. What do they do? What's the what's the ball and how does it fly? <laughs> it, it's like it, it's kind of like an organized, very very fast game of fetch, but it's like really wow. 
it's like relay fetch. There's like three or four dogs per team, and it's like oh, a wow, like a run, run down and back kind of relay thing with dogs. Weird. It, I, I, that sounds like something I would, I could kind of get into. That sounds fun to watch. It, it's, yeah. it's, it might be one notch below curling, but um, yeah, it's, it's it can't be too bad, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like I, you know, my dog's actually one of my dogs, Sawyer. Whenever he, th- when you throw something to him, he uses both hands if he <laughs> if he does it, when he's trying to catch it. And I've always commended him on his fundamentals. Though. Yeah, sure. <laughs> forget about forget about esports. Let's get some D sports going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As you, as, just make sure it's the right well, D sports. Um, so I spent the yeah. week. Uh, Dango plays competitive Overwatch. That's a whole separate. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I spent the week mostly sick. Last week we did a show with Justin Robert Young, and I wasn't quite myself. If you watched it, I'm sure uh, I, uh, I should have probably apologized to at least one or two fans because I was a little out of sorts. Um, had some painkillers from my back, and then I was basically dead for the next four days. Like I did not exist in the world of of living man, and that was pretty much my week. Like I usually have something better to say, but that was I mean I survived. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm good. Yep. Like, <laughs> Tom, how was your week? Uh, my week was great, actually. Uh, up until I, tonight. I went. What's that? Up until tonight. Well, <laughs> I mean, let's let's not dwell on the past. Uh, no, it was, it was good. Uh, over the weekend on Saturday, we had one of the rare Saturdays where we didn't have anything planned. Uh, so we just kind of hung out and watched television. Uh, Sunday, got together with a, an old friend of ours we hadn't seen in a while and got some brunch. Uh, and then Patrick Beja is in town for BlizzCon. So I picked him up at the airport today. He's hanging out, was watching the game with us earlier. I'm going to get to see folks like Scott and, and, and all kinds of other cool people uh, over the weekend at BlizzCon. So, yeah, uh, it's been a good week. Um, should I mention real quick that Patrick Beja is actually our guest for next week? No. Yeah, I reminded him. <laughs> <Actually. laughs> Don't worry. There's no, no jet lag. He'll be totally awake. Won't At dinner, problem. he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm supposed to be on that show. I'm like, yeah, next week. He's like, is it next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually, we managed, he was, we were like, we invited him and he was like, can we do that about three hours later? And we're like, oh, that's midnight my time. That's late as hell for Kent. Oh, well, let's move it back one day because then the next day is uh, Veterans Day and we get the day off anyway. So that just works out perfect. It was like, like it just worked. So, um, yeah. Hey, Scott, other than uh, flying down to Anaheim, I'm assuming you flew, we flew anyway. Uh, and, yeah. and already getting an early start on the, on the, on the con crud, you know, how's your week been? Oh man, this early start is responsible partly for this cr- crappy voice you're hearing, but also it's like day 15 or 16 of this thing. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the game Hearthstone or not, but if you are, I'm going to describe what I believe this virus is. It is like uh, a very, uh, popular and controversial card in that game right now. Uh, called Yog saron It's based on an, an old god, a uh, horrible boss he had to fight in, in World of Warcraft back in the uh, uh, Wrath of the Lich King days. And this card, uh, what it does is it comes out and, and basically uh, performs a bunch of random spells, and they may hurt you, they may harm you, they may hurt your opponent or harm them. Sometimes it wins entire games, sometimes it loses for you horribly. It's very exciting to watch, but it's also basically a giant luck ball. And in some ways, I feel like this virus I've had was my Yog sarong card because every day it was something different. One day I can barely talk. The next day my throat hurts so bad I can't hardly breathe. The next day I'm blowing things out of my nose I don't want to describe on a podcast. <laughs> like it just was, and it changed every single day and it's still hanging on. I don't think I'm contagious or anything, but seriously, I should be studied or something. Because it's just the stupidest freaking thing. So I commiserate with your week. I had a few days like that myself. Uh, lots of late nights playing Hearthstone, funny enough, in bed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just trying to make it happen. And, uh, yeah, I, other, I, I guess, so I'm not going to say I had a great week. I had a, <laughs> I had a week, and it culminated into what should be a pretty rad weekend with my friends uh, and family. My kids are here with me, and so is my wife. But, uh, yeah, to answer your question... It was all right. Um, so, yeah, last weekend was supposed to be my weekend to finally get to get some real time to play Civ Six, And I tried to play on Friday when I, was, when I had a sick day. And then again on Saturday. And both days, the map moving around gave me vertigo, which added to my nausea. 
So oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was like even even on my sick day I couldn't play my favorite video game. It, it was I was so pissed. There's no way yeah. to turn that off either, I don't think. <laughs> I tried to zoom out no, so it moved gotta... as little as possible and it's still just every time yeah. I moved it was like hmm? So Well that's the other thing is it would say because you can't it's one thing if you're moving it around, but it's also gonna like at the end of a turn it's gonna go Yeah. You know, yeah. bing bing. You're gonna hear Sean Bean say dumb some dumb quote, and now you're getting zipped to a part of the map. You're before the before days of was... whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I gotta say, this is the most exciting as far as Civ Six goes. This is the most exciting uh, voiceover since uh, Leonard Nimoy and Civ uh, was the Civ Three, Civ Four, Civ Four, right? Civ Four. Yeah. Civ yeah. Four, I, Civ, I believe. Yeah. Four, yeah, it's a really, really good. He's yeah. an awesome pick for a narrator. I love it. Yeah, um, game's really good. Six is good, man. People should uh, play six. I think six is one solid piece of gameplay. It's good. I wonder if he's gonna die by the end. Yeah, that's the <laughs> big joke, right? Will Will Sean Bean like when you finally get your ship off the ground and fly it to Alpha yeah, Centauri? Will Yeah, yeah. Will you also see Sean Bean die? Or he, something? he he uh, he only completes half of the voiceover for the final uh, for the advanced technology one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. And uh, yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, you got to get Civ Six. If you don't have it, Kent, if you don't have it, that's yeah. Well, my my son Lucas has it, and he is having a great time with it. So it, yeah. ah, I got the perfect idea. You just gave it to me. Here's what happens: he does the voiceover until the first half of that tech tree, then he dies, and then the guy who who played Faramir in the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> He does the rest of the voiceover. There we go. That's it. Yep. Get him yep. on the phone. Nice. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So, uh, and then so, Jon Snow. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um, Kit Harrington finish it off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Scott, I'm assuming uh, the geekiest thing you did this week was uh, maybe being on a podcast or flying down to BlizzCon, but anything else that might might come to mind? Oh man. Um, Oh, the geekiest thing I've done this week. That's a really interesting question. I know. It's 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 hard when um, you're an actual geek, like when you live the geek lifestyle, like like <laughs> like, like at least most of the Yeah. Because it's the full thing, right? Like it's you're you're always doing something like I'm I'm trying to think if there's anything I did that was sort of normal ish, but <laughs> actually I think maybe the maybe the nor maybe the most geeky thing I did was um Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> I uh I okay the, I'm gonna, this is a little bit different in the geeky realm, but I made a very, dis, uh, uh, how do I say this, specific decision today before I had to go through the TSA line to wear slip-on shoes so that I could take them off real easy. And that's pretty nerdy. So, you know? so like, I do that every time I travel. So, well, because uh, you're a giant nerd. So TSA geekery, you got it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, legit. Yeah, because everything else I do is all geeky. It's like, how do I get this video card to give me more speed? How do I... Uh, you know, watch old mash reruns and cheers at the same time. Like <laughs> some of that stuff happened, but you know, how did I ensure a faster trip to the TSA today was my big goal. Yeah. Tom, how about you? What was the geekiest thing you did this week? I'm going to repeat something that I mentioned on uh, daily tech news show today, but I think it is definitely the geekiest thing I did uh, this week. So I had been sitting on the couch playing Civ six on my surface book pro. And then uh, because I, I was playing Civ Six uh, when I when I stopped playing, I switched over to the browser and was I think I was just checking email. And then Eileen said, "Well, let's let's order some Italian food." So I went to the web page of our favorite Italian restaurant, pulled up their their menu, uh, started creating an order online. And then I said, "What do you want?" And she started to lean over and look at my laptop. And I said, "Well, hold on." And I pressed the button, uh, took the screen off, and handed it to her as a tablet. And said, here, you could just look at it yourself. And she scrolled through, touch screen, picked her thing. She handed it back. I put it back onto the, the keyboard, uh, finished up the order with putting in the credit card and everything, and ordered the Italian food. Amazing. See, that's pretty that, that's, good. Yeah, that's good. We all live in the future. That is a future thing. Oh, I totally forgot. Okay, sorry. This is bad. <laughs> I'm, I can't believe I forgot I, that I did this. I was not feeling good the other day, and I sat down in front of Google Docs, and I wrote an eight paragraph description of what I think is going on in Westworld and didn't share it with anyone. I just wrote it so I could get it out of my head. 
my theory as to what's going on in that show. So that's uh, no. the geekiest thing. I, I want to know. What, I want to know your theory. Right. Uh, that's I what I was going to say. Ideas. Is that a? Yeah. Is, is that little like specifically for your own personal? Or is that is that like notes for a future project where you want to explain it? Is that like you know, uh, yeah, mm. something like that? Or is it, it literally well, just it for you? Well, it could have been like a little fever dream or something. I felt like I just needed to get it out of my head. Like <laughs> I'd watch season or I watched episode five, and a whole, whole bunch of stuff clicked for me, and I went. Oh, I think I know what's happening here. So I, I just quickly wrote it all down. And my original intent was to throw it into Slack and share it with like this gaming group I have in the Frog Pants Slack. And I haven't done it yet because part of me thinks maybe I'm full of crap and my theory is terrible and I need to probably look at it again. But I have some ideas and, well, you just, know, sometimes you just got to get that stuff out of your head, make a, an info dump. Just wait until the, uh, until the fever ends and then go back and revisit it and see, uh, you know, what you want to do with it. <laughs> there you go. How about you? Else, you can you can prove to everybody that that you knew all along what was going on. Even if Look you didn't. <laughs> yeah, even if you didn't. Um, hey, Kent, what was your uh, what was your geeky thing of the week? Man, the well, I I did a few geeky things, but what I'm gonna what I'm gonna talk about is I'm actually going to plug a thing. It's not a thing that I did. It's a thing that Sergeant Muffin did. Ah. He created an iOS app for Diamond Club TV, and it got published today. And it works amazingly. Yes. It yeah. is no. it's so freaking cool. If you are on an iPhone or an iPad, you need to go to the App Store and get this app. It is yeah, I'm going to say something here out loud that I believe is true. Yep, Sergeant Muffin is. should be promoted to Colonel Muffin because his work, <laughs> his work is amazing. He's great. Yep. Yes, absolutely. And everyone should go to his Patreon because he will not take money. He doesn't do advertising. He does everything free of charge. Everybody needs to go to his Patreon. I think it's patreon.com slash Sergeant Muffet. Yeah, and Dark Redeemer just threw that in the chat room. So everybody should go th go there, hit that, and uh, just put a little bit towards the awesomeness that Sergeant Muffin puts forth. In fact, nice. he runs the servers that DCTV runs on uh, out of his own pocket. So go there, kick in a little a, yeah. a, a dime, and uh, keep making this that uh, awesome stuff happen. I back him on Patreon, mm -hmm. and he also hosts the Daily Tech News Show videos that are in the Daily Tech News Show video podcast feed. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He met, Every morning, TMS happens because of that guy for video, and all the podcasts that I do now are run that way. I mean, he basically just uh, – it's amazing. In fact, I've, I, I, I use it so much I have completely taken it for granted at this point, and I need to be reminded once in a while – Right. That that's not easy and that that didn't come from nowhere and that a guy did amazing things. So I yep. I appreciate the reminder here on the show. And, and, and real quick, I mean, since we're throwing it out there, he's just one of a very dedicated crew of people. Sergeant Muffin, Tin Vec, T2, T2. And I'm oh, sure yeah. I'm forgetting like a dozen people right now. But yeah, th so many. There's a crew that just <laughs> does everything for the for the chat room. I mean, T2, T2 and Tin Vec. Like how I don't know how these people pull this magic off. It's amazing. So um, yep. they all did something that I just started doing today, my geeky th thing of the week. I actually researched colleges. Now, I'm getting ready to retire. I need to get a degree so I can get a job that's actually worth a shit until this podcasting thing kicks off, right? Because that's going to happen any day now. Um, so <laughs> I researched college. But, yeah, everybody researches colleges. I created a spreadsheet with all the ups, downs, the tuition, how much my VA benefits are going to pay for, tuition assistance, how many credit hours, the overall cost, how long it's going to take me to get my the degree that I'm going for. like, And that's kind of the thing. I created this huge spreadsheet. Then I sent it to my wife, and my wife was like, I don't even know what, how, what huh? And I was like, God <laughs> damn it, this, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> do, do, do that too data intensive or what it, was the, what was I, the deal? I, you know how I am about data. I get my, my OCD kicks in. I want to be able to display everything as easy as possible to understand and read and do the calculations. And I want to have a column that just gives me the answer, but I also want to see all the mathematics behind it. You know what I mean? Cause <laughs> in my brain, I just can't just be given the, the final cracker. I got to see the, the tuna and the <laughs> cheese and you know, going on it. And yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's yeah. completely, I mean, half the stuff is useless, but I put it in there anyway because it might be the tiebreaker between what college I go to and, you know, when I finally finish this damn degree I've been working on for 15 years. You know? I like the, I like you refer to data as tuna and cheese. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a foodie, yeah. so everything, everything comes back to food. Everything comes back to me being like fatter it. than I should be. 
Um, <laughs> by the way, by the way, there's a combination of food that's actually pretty gross, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's tuna and cheese. It's a bad combo. <laughs> that does sound awful. It does. It gives me a whole new meaning to the word spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, so, so it's time for this. Um, Scott and Tom, how do you guys feel about uh, about the old TED talks? I like oh, it. I like it. I like me a TED talk from time to time. You yeah. know, I'm not ashamed. I'll yeah. admit it. I, I like to be inspired. I like a I like a, a slideshow and a. And a, and a person with a self-effacing attitude and a, and a good sense of humor who can teach me something about life. So, uh, so Tom, this actually might flow to you pretty good. Uh, James Lynn, Everyday Cybercrime and What You Can Do About It. I'm not going to get into specifics because it would just take too long, but essentially this, if you have a parent or a spouse or even a child that doesn't understand how easy it is to be hacked, to have your stuff stolen, how have life just get away from you because you're online, this is a 16-minute presentation that is perfect. It breaks it down real simple-like, gives them just enough information for, this, for them to understand it, to, for them to put a little bit of fear in them, but not so much so that they're like, oh, my God, i got to get offline. Um, highly recommended. It's, it's, it's a 16-minute course in how to protect yourself online and how this stuff works, and it's great. It's awesome. Uh, that's a that's a hard balance too. Like trying to trying to scare people enough that they take it seriously and like no seriously, you need to pick better passwords, but not scare them so much that they freak out and don't want to do anything online ever. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. yeah. Um. And Kent, you bastard. Um, <laughs> Kent Kent likes to pick the ones with the names that I can't pronounce. So uh, that is that is the number one criteria for for the <laughs> pick. Because I know he's gonna try to read the name. So Amos, uh, uh, what what was the TED talk that I chose? Uh, Juanes Kabaj. I'm gonna go with Juanes <laughs> Kabaj. That, I think you nailed it. That seems I'll legit. That. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> what a driverless world could look like. And this is a, this is another one for Scott and and, and Tom. They both have good opinions no. on this. Right. So uh, any longtime listener to this show knows that I am a huge fan of driverless cars i cannot wait for that future it's because you uh, hate driving well okay well there's a lot of factors that just the, the safety of cars is ridiculously bad i mean more people die from car accidents a year than 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 we should even talk about a hundred years from now when when driverless cars are the only thing we're going to look back as a society and just think what kind of savages the 20th century and the 21st century were to even to think that that was OK to drive cars into each other. Um, but no. So I've, I've always focused on the safety aspect and also the convenience thing, because you're right. I, I'm not a big fan of driving like I used to be when I was a teenager, early 20s. I loved it. The freedom that it represents, everything like that. But now it's just it's just an inconvenience. I'd rather be checking my Twitter or updating some spreadsheet or, or so, reading an article or something like that. So what you're Instead saying, I, what you're saying is you don't want your grandkids driving 12 hours to get laid like you did. <laughs> like I did when I was a teenager. Yeah. Right. No, they need to be driven 12 hours by a driverless car to get exactly. laid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, right. interesting thing about this Ted talk though, is that <laughs> this speaker, he, he touched on those subjects, but he was really looking at this topic as a, a, like a public transportation standpoint, like as far as like the layout of a city, like how do you build a transportation system for a city and the, how vastly different that would be if it was driverless. Well, I'm, Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with, I'm totally with you on that's the future and we're going to get there at some point, but man, this stuff just keeps banging up against tradition. And I cannot speak for other cultures, but here in America, we get really weird about this. There's a tradition when you're 16 of getting the keys from your dad to take some girl to prom, and that goes away. Uh, there's all these traditions of driving and having a truck and moving your own stuff and you know those sorts of things. And I, I, I think it just can't be understated how, how uh, prickly that stuff's going to stay for a while. But right. I'm with you 100%. I don't want to own a car anymore. I want to pay a service 
uh, either per time or a monthly thing or something. And I want a robot to come get me and take me where I need to go and be done with that world. And so I'm, I'm a thousand percent with you and it can't come soon enough. Right. Tom, what, where, where do you sit on that? No, man, speaking of tradition, like why don't we teach our children to ride horses anymore? And, and you can't hand over the buggy whip to the kids. Uh, we've <laughs> lost something in America. And uh, no, no, I, I'm kidding. Uh, I, yeah, Scott's absolutely right. We, we go through these like, oh, but it's the tradition. And it, it takes a while to get over that hump. I think we'll get over that hump, though. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think you're right that we'll be looking back on it and going, wow, we let people drive like mm -hmm. anyone drive. Like, yeah. now th yeah. this is, this is an interesting concept in that, you know, San Francisco is a city that is built now it's built around public transportation. Um, LA is getting there, although it's, it's, <laughs> it's got a ways to go. Um, you know, but it's, it's something that's on the conscious mind of the people that are planning cities now you know, how are new cities going to be or how is new development going to be when we do have driverless cars? Like what changes? I mean, you, you don't have to have a, a parking garage in the middle of four big, big buildings, you know, big office buildings. Right. You can have a parking garage half a mile down the road out of the way of everybody. And they can be airport parking garages. You don't need an eight-lane freeway probably anymore. Oh, well, mm -hmm. C CGP Gray just had a video about driverless cars and how they'd be more efficient because they would all be able to start and stop at the same time and maintain right. distances and you wouldn't have the accordion effect. I am ready. Like I loved. I am one of those people. I'm, I'm completely unlike like like uh, you you two. Um, I like driving. I like driving. I like driving long distances. The thing that I couldn't stand about being in Hawaii was being pent up because I just left Okinawa, Japan, got to Hawaii, and I'm still on an island, and now I can't just drive for 12 hours in any given direction. Like, give me the open road and a V8, and let me just dump gas in the atmosphere. And I'm saying this as, as a pagan. Like, I'm all about the environment, but I don't give a shit when it comes to my gas. Like, just let me hit the gas pedal and, and, and spend a day driving and be somewhere new. And that's just, I mean, it's, it's ingrained to me. It's, it's, it's my Sturgeon family blood that, you know, that this trickled down over, over, over however many generations. I'm just ready to go. Um, yeah. But when it comes to yeah, driverless you're cars... You're basically describing what we're talking about. We're talking about an ingrained tradition you see that yep. that desert stretch between nevada and california and you just desire to be behind the wheel and yes. do that and, and play track you know good travel music and you want to you know I, you could really get granular about the things people are I, used to with their driving habits i went through a divorce behind the wheel of a of a ram 1500 i caught up to all the episodes of buzz out loud behind the wheel of a ram 1500 driving across country Hundred, like literally hundreds of thousands of miles between where my girls live and where my uh, from a while there, my wife and I lived in different uh, locations because of military service. Uh, you know, dr driving all those miles, hundreds of thousands of miles, and it's just it's it's mind clearing. It's it's like my own personal cleansing. It's the best. It's the best uh, um, support I've ever had. Was just just time to process on the open road, and I am ready for driver for for cars to come uh, do what they do. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I've had some great road trips. Like I, one of my best memories was just hopping in my car in Austin, Texas, driving as close as possible to route 66 as I could still find all the way to Los Angeles and back. This is like 1997, something 96. And it was great. Uh, so, so when you can find that open road, which is increasingly harder and harder, mm -hmm. I, I get the appeal and I hope that we can preserve something like that you know where we can actually just go and uh and 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 be able to drive if we want in a safe manner and all of that sort of thing but i don't want to have to drive right like that's that's the key i don't i don't want to be forced to drive right uh, uh no yeah. i and i agree uh the only thing that i really like about long road trips is listening to podcasts um uh, and all four of us here in this room are podcasters this room this skype this skype connection i guess um, so we are on our 100th episode and we have gone, <clears throat> Amos and I have gone through many ups and downs over the years. Uh, the only, what, what Amos now, two and a half years, I think two and a half years. Right. So Tom and Scott, you guys combined probably have a couple of decades of podcasting experience under your belts. 
No, yeah. that, that's pretty that's clear. Probably close. I, I think that's about right. I mean, I started making MP3s in like '99 and posting those to the internet, and they were basically podcasts. If you take that time and add that all up, all especially through the mid mid aughts or whatever, and you take Tom's time at it, which was very early. Uh, where we easily that I'll bet. Well, yeah. Where do you draw the line, right? Because because what you were doing was essentially podcasting. Before I started doing podcasting in 2005, I was doing uh, radio stuff for Tech TV, which was podcasty, and I did actual radio before that. So just all kinds of blends together. So so yeah. it's easy to say that you guys have have decades of podcast ish experience. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that that's true so, at this point. Yeah. So it's yeah. So through all that, um, Tom, what would you say has been the most difficult part of your podcasting? Uh, I would, the first thing that comes to mind is video, like just doing video. Once video became an option, it's all, it, it has not gotten easier. It has not become as dead simple as it is to post an audio podcast. Uh, and, and it... I say it's not gotten easier. It's definitely gotten easier. Like you can you can find the tools, uh, you can find the processing power, but like on the video end, the 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 codex that you have to deal with and all of the complications that it introduces, uh, beyond just the fact that when you're doing video, you have to deal with lighting and, and things that are endemic to the fact that you can see stuff. Uh, but I don't know if that's really going to the heart of what you're asking. I, I think the the difficult the difficulty that I've overcome in the in the truest sense of like podcasting as creating content, forget about whether it's video, audio, or otherwise, is figuring out what are the things that keep people coming back. Because I've I've found it's it's actually not hard to do a thing that if enough people know about it, they'll go and try out. But it's hard to keep them coming back, mm. especially over the long term. Yeah, right. we, Scott, uh, we we mentioned uh, when Tom, when you did my episode of Undaunted about your transitions between shows and and the things that you've you know you've said, hey, okay, this isn't working or this is working or whatever else, um, and it, it it just always amazes me the the level of of cut it or go that that you seem to have. Like you have this instinct, like okay, well, this is it's time to go. Um, Scott, as far as you go, like you've been you've been doing the instance for how long now, like damn near if not just over a decade right um yeah we're looking at uh january of 2006 so we are at a decade as of january al yeah, almost god almost 11 years now um yeah. and I i've listened to about i'll be honest about, about uh about four years worth until i just i got so sad listening to you describe instant the it, it, describe world of warcraft and me not being able to play that i just couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't listen anymore like it i cried every week um for you, uh, what has been your like most difficult part of of podcasting? Before we get into happy stuff, let's cover all the bad, then we can go happy from there. Kind of like the World Series, right, Tom? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I a would like to echo Tom's uh, thoughts. I think those are dead on. But um, for me, if I were to add anything to that, it would be it is very difficult to show restraint in wanting to do everything. In other words, I. I have an idea for 50,000 podcasts somewhere written down and it's very difficult for me sometimes to, to realize that it's untenable to want to try to do it all. And the best thing for me to do would be uh, to, to create more narrow focuses. And I think I've gotten better at that. Um, I, I, I built what I refer to as pillars of the frog pants network now. Uh, that I feel very strong about. There's there's three or four shows that just are kind of tent poles, and anything I do on the periphery of that is either for just good, great fun, or a chance to work with people I like to work with, or whatever. Um, but 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 in order to sort of maintain this as a as an independent business, I've had to to knuckle down in that way, and that's hard. Like I want to do a Westworld podcast. I want to do a thousand shows about a thousand things. But I know if I do that, I end up watering down uh, uh, the other core portions of what I do for people who already love those things for what they are. And I've already retained them uh, in large part. So, you know, I, I'm just sort of watering down their experience by stretching myself that much thinner. So that's a that's a thing lately that I've kind of had to come to and head to. And when I, I feel like when I started this, I just, you know, I had no there was nowhere to stop. It was just let's just keep making stuff, keep making stuff forever. And I've I've come to the conclusion that you know sometimes you need to back up a little bit, take the broader view, 
and focus where the people are either already or where you think you can find them or what, what you have the most passion for. So I would say that that's been the, the most difficult part for me is to, is to just take it down a notch and focus where focus is needed. So to, to follow up with that, Scott, what was kind of the, uh, the deciding factor, I guess, to make the jump from you know, a hobby podcaster to realizing that, that this is something that you could do to make money and then actually starting the Frog Pants Network, like where was that transition and like how did you reach that conclusion that this is the, the now, way that you... Now, I, I see Tom smirk in there because Scott actually announced his intent to be a full-time podcaster on Buzz Out Loud. Yeah, so, I did, yeah, on their thousandth episode, which yeah. was it's still a huge honor for me. I was, you know, it was a thing that uh, actually mattered quite a bit to me because not only did I announce it on their live, but I did it from a, a closed office in a place I worked for right before I jumped out. <laughs> so I actually kind of did it in the in the den of the enemy a little bit. Um, they didn't know I was about to quit. <laughs> so I'm using company Wi-Fi uh, to connect to Tom's show and announce on video, thousandth episode, that I was uh, quitting and doing that full time. It was really a weird a weird experience for me. But for me... I mean, the, the, the decision was easy once I realized that, A, I had spread myself really, really thin was, and started, you know, started basically realizing I had two jobs. And one of them was starting to make close to what I was making in my full-time job. And I realized, well, why, what am I doing both for? I don't, I don't need double the money. I really just need to, you know, get a house payment, make sure the car is taken care of and get the kids through school. And what else is there, really? Just try to stay out of debt. And... I realized, well, why am I not just, why am I not going for this? So I just decided that if I didn't do it then, I never would. And so sometime in 2009, I forget the date now. It seems like an important date, but I forgot what day I did it. But I jumped out, went full time and the best thing I ever did. I only have, the only regret I have is I didn't do it sooner. Um, so my question following up to that would be for both Tom and Scott. You are both independent podcasters. Like you, yeah. you podcast for a living and at one point, there was a moment of decision where you were convinced that podcasting independently and doing that full time was your shtick and you had to tell your wife, <laughs> Tom, how was that? What, what was that moment like for you with Eileen? I'm sure yeah. she was fairly understanding with, with what you were doing. No, it's, it's interesting because you know, my decision came when Leo decided that he needed someone in Petaluma to do tech news today. Uh, and so I was going to have to go off and do something else. And I had to decide what that was. Was I going to go try to get a job, go back to CNET? Was I going to go try to get some full-time gig somewhere else or freelance? And I, I decided that what I wanted to do was just try to do my, my shows on my own and see, see what I could do. And Eileen was ridiculously understanding. Um, you know, she she had a stable job, which certainly helped a little, but she basically just said, "Do yeah, do what you want to do. Try it out. See if it works." You know, as 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 long as it works, uh, you know, basically as long as it as long as it pays the bills, uh, it, it's fine. And and that that gave me a good stable, you know, something that I didn't have to think and worry about. I, I spent all my time worrying about me and whether I was going to be able to pull it off, but it was really essential to have that not even be a question, not even be something I had to worry about. Now we do have the, uh, the merit militia showing up in chat room right now. Just so, just, just so Aww, <laughs> look at that. You um, guys are the best. Scott, uh, how did, how did you break your decision? Cause I'm sure you decided on your own before you, you broke it to your wife. Uh, how, how'd that conversation go? Well, we were, I mean, we talked, Kim and I talked about everything all the time. And in fact, it was more, it was a conversation between us and the kids. It's just kind of the way we do things in this house. So it was never like, a, I never spent too much time kind of mulling around what I was going to say to her because the entire process was sort of talked about from, from A all the way to Z. Um, and once again, I'm in a situation where I had, had I been with somebody who has not always been incredibly supportive of whatever it is that I need to do, that the kids want to do, that we want to do together or apart or whatever, um, I'd be hosed. So uh, huge credit to her for, uh, you know, always being supportive of this stuff. And not only that, but taking a real risk. In this particular case, 
you know, we, it was always important to us when we got married that when we had kids, Kim really wanted to be a stay at home mom uh, so that she could always sort of be there for the kids and uh, be there when they were young and all their informative years. And, and I think that was really uh, key and important to how my kids are turning out. They seem to be all right. They're pretty good, you know, pretty good coming out of the oven, let's say. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, you know, that we, we always felt like, wow, we're lucky that we get to do this. This is this is a thing that's hard to do. I'm able to, to work and she's able to do this. And together we're we're reaching our family goals. And when I made this uh, suggestion and we started to talk about it, I mean, obviously that seems seems a little nutty when you're trying to sort of maintain that. And yet we were somehow able to pull it off. So uh, no way I could have done this without her her willingness to do it. And it was never like, well, I don't know. Are you sure? It wasn't like that. It was just like, well, of course, let's do this. Whatever we need to do, we'll do it together. You know, we live together, we die together. Whatever we got to do, we do it together. So worked out good. Um, that's this is see podcasting for me and for me and Kent, like he's got a little bit more freedom than I do. I think, uh, is not as far as time wise, he's very tied up with things, but, um, as far as like uh, spousal approval, um, his girlfriend's like, yeah, do the podcast. Um, just don't take too long doing it. My wife on the other hand is, is, is actively hostile against my, uh, my podcasting desires. So it's, it's always, it's always a, 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 a interesting, interesting, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just it's. I like to hear about other 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 podcasters and their significant others' opinions. And I mean, how when you say actively it. hostile, she's obviously not turning off the power on you or anything like that. So what does that mean? <laughs> um, I have uh, I have on the on our on our iCloud calendar. I have very specific dates on when I can record RMP and when I can edit RMP. And it's like it's on the calendar. Anything beyond that. Is like when I when I do stuff with Jackie Hearn or or do stuff uh, on Diamond Club or I'm just working on, hey, you know what? Let's just uh, I want to spend an extra hour this week and really get some good show notes together because we've got an awesome guest coming on or whatever else. Like that is all. Like I have to escape everything, make sure everything's done, make sure my to my honey do list is completely done. It's got it, got <clears> it. You know, she's <laughs> she's she she she's like uh, podcasting your last priority. Zero. Uh, Zero. Well, right. I can totally see that. It's probably that way for a lot of people. I mean, one of the nice things about Kim is half of what I do, which we haven't even really talked about, is a lot of this artwork stuff. I sell a lot of stuff in my store. I'm creating commissions all the time. There's always projects happening. So a lot of what I do with revenue is based on my illustration side of my life. Mm. And Kim ends up being, <laughs> she goes to the post office way more often than I do. She's taking packages to EPS. She's constantly making sure stuff shipping where it needs to ship. And, uh, you know, because of that, it's, it's more of a joint effort than, you know, just me podcasting all the time, which has been nice. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a nice break from me being on the microphone all the time and we can kind of coordinate stuff together and I don't know, makes, makes us all feel like we're working towards some common thing. Yeah. And that, that's the dream. That's Amos and I both, I, I think have the same feeling about this. If we could do podcasting full time. Or you know, pay our bills, like you said. I think Scott, uh, pay the mortgage, take care of the cars, take care of the kids' school, and and yeah, if we could do that, podcasting and creating things, uh, that that's the dream. That's what we would do. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of what we're working toward. I think. And and uh, I, I can I can really sympathize because because Tom, you and I have already talked about it, but Scott, you just mentioned how we have. 10 million million ideas and uh time to do 10 of them um mm. and yeah th that's exactly i've actually created a uh a a a, 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 a channel specifically for sharing ideas and getting that out there um it's i, I just i have so many different a, a slack channel specifically for getting ideas out there and and helping people with with what they want to do and even though we uh kent and i are still new at this compared to you two of course um but there's a lot of people out there we people have been asking us for help on this and, and uh advice on this and stuff like that which first of all it, it makes us feel really weird because we still feel like we're new at this um but second of all like i have so many ideas that if if anybody wants to podcast out there 
Talk to these. <laughs> talk to these four individuals. Up for, yeah, we, talk to these guys. Yeah, yeah. The, the four of us have ideas out the yang. Some of them we 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 think are great ideas, but we don't have time for. Some of them we we are just offshoots of ideas. Let us know. We can feed you something. Like it's. <laughs> yeah, we'll make yeah, a, a license a license agreement. We'll yeah. make it all work. Exactly. Right. It's. <laughs> I've know, I've come I'll, up I'll with all. You, I, I just want to open source like a stream of, of ideas of show formats because I come up with them all the time and there's no way I'll ever do a tenth of them, even that. Yeah. Yeah. So actually one of the things you guys said that you're doing to sort of coagulate your ideas and to flesh them out, it's one of the things Tom does that I need to do more of. And I really like this about his operation. He, he likes to have these meetings, like there's quarterly meetings with not just us as contributors to DTNS, but with those who support him on Patreon and those who kind of help shape the show from that angle and not just, Hey, what do you want to see? But also like evaluating what's happening now. Is that stuff working? What can we do to add to that? The headlines thing came out of that sort of thinking like mm -hmm. that sort of stuff is, is uh, if anyone out there is listening going, Oh, this is a great podcast info. I think that's a really important thing to be able to do is to not be either too lazy or too vain to look at your own stuff and say, how we doing once in a while. Um, yeah. and it doesn't have to be a survey monkey every week or anything weird like that, but you know, something to, something to always just think about and, and, and return to your own stuff and make sure you're, you're keeping it up and uh, pointing it in the right direction and getting the results you want. And sometimes it's easy to lose track of that stuff. So. Yeah. There's always a, a few things in every show I do that I know aren't working and I'm going to change. There's a few things I know are great and I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to keep them. But there's that that group in the middle, and I may have 20 ideas on what to do with that group in the middle, and like just throwing it out and talking to as many people as possible starts to reinforce the ones that I think are good and exclude the ones that don't work as well. And that's just kind of the way I approach those things. Um, yeah. I'm just going to do a little self-indulgence right here. Back in South by Southwest last year, I mentioned to Tom, hey, you should do just a show that's just the headlines real quick, real easy, and let it go out of the way. And Tom told me, <laughs> Tom said, hey, it's all uh, it's all open license. Like, take it, run with it. I'll fully endorse it. Just make it happen. Go do. And my lazy ass never found the time to actually do it. So finally, he did it on his own, and it's amazing. So just, <laughs> just, so, yeah. just so we're clear. Well, and uh and Theater Monkey, uh, J uh, Joe, uh, a.k.a. Theater Monkey, was clipping out the headlines from DTNS and putting them up in a feed as well for a while. And, and so I had to talk to him when, when I started recording Daily Tech headlines. I was like, do you want to keep doing that? You don't need to keep doing that. And, and he ended up saying, well, if, you know, if you've got this feed, then I don't think I need to do it anymore. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, the point of Creative Commons license on all this stuff is if you want to redistribute it, repackage it, you know, derivative works, as long as you follow that license and attribute so that it points back to us and we can make our Patreon pitch, that's all we care about. Yeah. Or if you want to take all the terrible, dumb things I say on the morning stream out of context and make mashups, that's fine too, everybody. Cause it, that's, you know, we look forward to those. Uh, I suppose we could make a vine. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> too soon, too oh. soon. Yeah, too soon, because so, uh, they haven't actually sunset it yet. So, so gentlemen, yeah. you two are uh, are geeks. Have you ever heard of geeknegamer.com? That's geek, the no. letter n, gamer.com. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, uh, you, you, I'm surprised there's not DTNS and Frog Pants stuff on there. This is a site that's got all kinds of cool gamer stuff, geek stuff. Cruise on over there, man. It's it's really, it's re I, like when I found out about it. It amazed me. It blew me out of the water. I told Kent, "Hey, this is a, this is a site for us, man. We just we just need to start buying stuff. Like this is crazy." Yeah, and the the cool thing about it is that there's all these collectibles and and uh, clothing items and all these all these really cool geek things, and it's super inexpensive. You can fill your cart with three or four things and still be only spending like ten or ten or twelve bucks. Uh, but you know what's even cooler, Amos, what's than that? than just spending that that ten or twelve bucks. You could actually spend like eight or ten bucks. I uh, I like it cheap, man. I like it cheap. Heck yes, I've got a cheat code for you. I, I, if I, you at checkout, if you use Ritual Misery during checkout, you get an additional ten percent off of that already low price. That's like tax free in California. Yeah, basically, <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, so Kent, if I use this code Ritual Misery at checkout, like, what kind of what, what, what am I going to dis- get a discount on? Like, what what's going to happen with this? Uh, what, what what am I going to get? Whatever you put in your cart on that on that first visit, there you like you're like, oh my gosh, I need I need these ten items. I need that those twelve things. It's not just the first item; it's your entire cart. You so, get ten percent off so, by using so, Ritual Misery. So. Scott Johnson is a gamer. He's an avid gamer. What if he wants to he, he wants to fire up a ROM with some old NES titles, but he needs a NES controller with a USB port attached to the end of it? Like, is that something he can get at geekandgamer.com? Well, actually, geekandgamergear.com, yeah. he would absolutely be able to get one of those. And they're, wow. only, they're only like 10 bucks. They're like, cheap. Like, that's, that's amazing, nope. dude. Like, that can't be real. S- sign me up. It turns out I actually could sort of use one of those. <laughs> yeah, so, so one more time. Just go to geekandgamergear.com. That's, that's geek, the letter N, gamergear.com. Use Ritual Misery at checkout. You get 10% off your whole first order. Really cool stuff there. Check it out. All right, um, and, so um, a, a few minutes ago, we were talking about Creative Commons and uh, basically being allowed to rip off your guys' shows. And uh, we kind of, we kind of did that. Well, tonight. not necessarily. Like, like so, it kind of goes like this. W- once we announced that we had Scott and Tom, like we, it was official. Like we got the email. Uh, Scott said, "All right, it's on my calendar too, and we're good to go." Like uh, we were like, "Okay." So we we started telling people. One of our common fans, like it, it, first of all, it's amazing to me we actually have fans. Second of all, the <laughs> fact that our fans might run in your circles is it, crazy. But someone came along and slipped us a digital copy, a digital early draft, ah. a, an early draft of the pop quiz scoring sheets. Like, oh, it's 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 you mean amazing. the rules. Yeah, it's, well, it's in a it's in a bridged it's in a bridged it, yeah, version. It's, it's, okay, it's, I was gonna say because you thing. know that's like thousands of pages. No, no, no. This is clearly not the whole thing. It, it's really sure, an sure. early early draft. It's really kind of ridiculous how. I mean, they're they're still like. Well, it's also old, so that that must be an ancient document. Well, I mean, th- this one, this one in particular, it's it, like you can see it's because it's scanned in. It's a scanned in PDF, and it's got tears. Like you can see where they tore yeah. it out of yeah, the yeah. original book, and it's actually got like <laughs> like notes written on the side, like little clarification, like a, like you know little annotations on the side. So um, monkish script. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's not even all in English either. I, I, like there's certain there's certain like like I think it's Hindu or something. I don't know. It, it's sure. kind of crazy. A little, little Sanskrit. Squirrel. Yeah, maybe yeah. Some Dravidian yeah. languages, possibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we only got the first like 200 or so pages of it. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and let's rough, face it, rough. I didn't have time to read it all. I mean, some of it's not even in English. It, it's kind of crazy. So, um, so we, we felt obliged, like we, we had to fulfill our, our fans request and uh, come up with a pop quiz for you guys. Oh, sweet. Well, I'm, totally I'm all fair. in on this. Yeah. It's yeah. only fair. So, uh, we, we don't have the fancy sound effects that, uh, that Scott has, though. Like, you know, trying to find Scott's board, because Scott has a board of like 5 million sound effects that he can just call to at whim. Like, it's tapped into his neural network, I think. But, uh, Kent, what are they going to hear if they get one right? All right. If you get one right, you're going to hear this. And if, nice. you, get, if you get one wrong, you're going to hear this. <laughs> all right ours are stupid yours are better, yours are better. <laughs> yeah um actually I, I i could have gotten the music and i decided not to just be just out of just out of respect um yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't want to rip you off completely yeah that's, sure. that's just shitty. so uh so ken's gonna ask the questions i'm gonna try to to delve through the uh the the 200 or so pages that i remember um it's it's probably not gonna work out but sure. i'm gonna try to no, score I understand. it out so. do your best <laughs> um, so Ken, you want to, who you want to go first? You want to go Scott or Tom? Cause, uh, you know what? Let's, let's start with Scott. All right. We have five questions for Scott in an area of his expertise. We will see how much he is an expert on this topic. I tell Scott. you how good you guys are doing already is I literally like stopped my hand from opening a text edit page where I could keep score. Like this is good. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Actually, uh, so Scott, your t- uh, your category for the quiz is Mad Max Fury Road. Okay, I love that movie. This should be great. Um, I thought that was a really a really well kept secret because I don't think anyone. Yeah, in I was going to say I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys have heard, but what was the, the name of it again? I don't think I've seen this movie. 
Um, it's uh, it's it's Angry Jim, um, Bad Highway. Angry Jim, Bad Highway. It's uh, all right. It's I'll classic. write that down. I'll have to take a look. All right. All right. So Scott, are you ready? Yes, yeah, so, sir. I am. All right. Your first question. Mad Max Fury Road won the 2016 Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Action Performance by a Stunt Ensemble in Motion Picture. How many actors are credited in that ensemble? Oh, my gosh. I'll give it to uh, you within within 10. Okay. Uh, uh, 24. Oh, very close. Uh <laughs> No, not even, not even, not even in the ballpark. That there was a lot of stunts in that movie, Scott. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, yeah, a hundred and three stunt performers. Oh my gosh, that's almost that's almost one for every year that the Cubs haven't won the World Series. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, is- uh, a, 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 according to the rules, he gets a, a tenth of a point to a current uh, current events credit. Ah, look at it, Tom. You really do have your your rule book. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, so That's far crazy. so good. Yeah. See, all right. So next question, question number two. What was the budget for the film? Uh, I'm gonna say two hundred and sixty-three million dollars. I can't get that to you. This it was a hundred and fifty million dollars. Oh my gosh, guys, they got that for a deal. That is a steal for what that movie is. Uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be uh, that's that's gonna be zero points. Uh, it, yeah, kinda, listen it, to how this goes. What if I gave you the best movie of the last ten years? Oh, that sounds great. What if I gave you it for hundred and fifty million dollars? Is all? Would you buy it then? I mean, think <laughs> of the deal they made. That's amazing. Uh, now, do you know how much it grossed overall? Just a little, little extra, extra, little, little. Uh, I'm gonna guess uh, worldwide or just domestic. Worldwide. Uh, or I'm domestic, say... either one. Whichever one, which you have to announce for beforehand. Uh, three hundred and twenty-five. Three hundred twenty-five million. Is that domestic or worldwide? Worldwide. Uh, you're actually very close. It was 335 million, I believe. Uh, I knew so, it was. Uh, I knew it was in the 300, but so I can't remember. For sure. I'll, I'll give. Uh, I'll give a half a point for uh, for accuracy on the bonus on uh, the extra credit. So. Nice, nice. All right. So your actual question number three. Hugh Keys Burn played the villain Toe Cutter in the original Mad Max film. What character did he play in Fury Road? Uh, he played. I know this because there were a couple of guys like this. Um, oh crap! I don't think it's main bad guy. I don't think it's what's uh his, what's his name. Um, oh, uh, is it the bullet farmer? I don't know his name, but the bullet farmer guy with the club feet and the nipples hanging out. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Is it Nipple Man? No, it. it is Immortan Joe. Oh, it's Immortan Joe. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I was. I thought that was too obvious. Crap! I knew he was in the first movie, but I couldn't remember what villain he played. Uh, score, scorekeeper. Uh, no points on that one. Ah. Uh, All right. Next question. How many days of filming did the production take? Well, they went long. I know that. So I'm gonna say. The actual days of filming, um, 90 days of filming. Hmm. I'll leave this one to the judge. It is 120 days of filming. So I don't, I'll, I'll give a, um, <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to go with, uh, uh, two thirds of a point for, uh, for claiming two thirds of the time. No, oh, that's not bad. Also very Tom like, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in the rules, Scott. I mean, yeah, he just obviously has read some I mean, of the rules. That's, so. e- that's, sure. even, that's even page two. I mean, that's not even like deep into yeah, the Yeah, it's pretty early on. Right. 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 stuff. <laughs> All right, Scott, for your final question, yeah. who wrote the music for the film? Oh, uh, 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 Junkie XL. That's that right. Is pretty, uh, and uh, it's one a great, quarter. Uh, great soundtrack, by the way. Uh, totally worth listening to. It's real good. We're going to go a quarter point speed bonus on that one. Nice. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> All right, and uh, now it's time for Tom. All right. All right, Tom. Um, since we're on the topic of movies, I figured I would I would give you a movie that 
you might have seen once or twice. Um, actually, a series of movies that that I think you might have delved into a little bit. Um, how about some Star Wars trivia? Uh, can't can't. There's no. He doesn't know anything about Star Wars. Like Star War. Uh, <laughs> a Star uh, War. Okay. It's, it's kind of like Star Trek, I guess. Sure. But, except uh, with a war. Except if, more violent. If, war, yeah, if only. Violent. If only Tom had watched this little thing on YouTube. Uh, let's talk. Uh, no, no, that's there's a podcast. Let's talk about. Uh, um, uh, yeah, something. Uh, some Tom, YouTube I think, I think your friend Jenny does a does a podcast about. Yeah, it sounds something that sounds slightly familiar. Look, oh. let's just pretend I'm not dumb about Star Wars and give me the quiz. Let's see, there's. there's... <laughs> let's let's go with that. Oh, nice back. I almost forgot about that. Uh, all right. Tom, uh, five questions about Star Wars, and here we go. What planet was Jango Fett from? Oh, uh, Jango Fett was from Mandalore. Yeah, the Mandalorian. Given away by his Mandalorian armor. Ah, mm-hmm. good. Half, half point speed bonus. All right, uh, question two. What year did George Lucas begin writing the first script for Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope? So the first Star Wars movie. Mm. When did he begin writing the script? I'm going to get this one wrong, but I think it's 1971. Um, he was he was correct that he got it that he was going to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a full point. He he said he's going to get it wrong. That's that's a point right there. It's, oh man, it's playing by the rules. That's I mean it's it's in the book. Uh, 1973 is the year, so you were not far off at all. Um, any any um, additional points there, or just the one point uh, for being correct? Uh, let's give a half point uh, n- uh, detraction from uh, from Kent for asking about the score. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Wow, uh, judge's point detraction. That's it's, tough. That's that, a tough that's, one. that's chapter three stuff. There, that's that's all. Yeah, that. yeah. That's, chapter that's three. high level. Oh man. Okay. All right. Uh, what was the budget for Star Wars, the original Star Wars movie? What was the what was the working budget? I'm going to say 123 oh. million. Oh, I know this one. Ooh, no, that's uh, that's way over what it actually Scott, was. Scott, can you I would, steal? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can Scott, I you steal? Try? Sure. Uh, I mean, you don't have to give me points. No, for no, it, no. It it's easy. Scott, it Scott, seven... Scott, this is this yeah. is beta. So I have the beta rules, and then the beta rules. There's actually some stealing involved. So they hadn't, right. they hadn't edited that part out yet. So if you want, I mean, if you if you think you can be, steal it, go ahead. Original amount seven million dollars. Hmm. My sources indicate eleven million dollars. Oh, uh, maybe that's adjusted for inflation, though. That could, yeah, that's actually what I was thinking. So maybe uh, in uh, nineteen seventy-six dollars, it was it was uh, seven million. I don't know. Uh, Judge, any points being awarded on the side here? Uh, the judge is confirming the uh, the official source for all uh, all things internet, because um, uh, the, the judge uh, the judge has has uh, uh, ideas about that. Um, the judge is not good at looking things up. <laughs> so we we will go we will come back to that one. So Tom, your fourth question is. What was the production code name for Return of the Jedi, or at the time it was called Revenge of the Jedi? Revenge of the Jedi, yeah. It was, oh, shoot. Blue blue something. I don't remember. Ah, let's see, I'm going to... Oh, I it wish it was Blue Thunder. Thing. It is, it's Blue Harvest. Oh. <sighs> Blue Harvest, damn it. Uh, he, he it's Blue he, Thunder. He, he, it's all about a helicopter called Blue Thunder, right? Let's, uh, let's let's go a half a point for uh for getting half the answer right. Got Fair it. enough. Yeah, they they um were under the guise of a horror movie. They told any any uh, looky loos that they were making a horror movie called Blue Harvest. Blue Harvest. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Tom, your final question: What is the actual name of the Cantina Band? I don't know. Oh, the the Beatles. <laughs> uh, no, this was um, this was uh, a later incarnation of the Beatles, known as Figrin Dan and the Modal Nodes. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've Dan. heard this. 
That's uh, <laughs> that's gonna be a, a half point for uh, for knowing that he didn't know. So that's uh, yeah. That's, that's how it's gonna go. Thank you. All right. Um, so, Judge, any uh, final ruling on the third question? Uh, yeah, that's gonna go with uh, zero on both sides. Uh, both both individuals were in, were incorrect. Um, even even adjusted for inflation. Well. Uh, now, I'm not going to overrule you. Obviously, you're playing on a different rule set. Under the current rules, though, I would get point credit for saying I'm going to say $123 million because that is, in fact, what I did. Right, but that, but that is not in the beta. However, there is yeah, the— Yeah, no, uh, that's fair. That's the, totally the, fair. The, uh, the attempt to correct the judge is point zero one per, uh, point uh, marked off. So Ah, see, pass that test. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that brings final scores. Uh, Scott, you ended with 2.5. And Tom, you ended with 3.4. So, Tom, you come out on top on this one. The clear Good winner. Game, Scott. Good game. Yeah. Good game. No problem. High five. <laughs> GG. Yeah. GG. All that. <clears throat> GG uninst uninstall uh, <laughs> do even lift bro. <laughs> REN. That was the, that was a, that was basically a dream come true to put you guys through the the current geek quiz. That was that was a blast. And I appreciate you guys for that. <laughs> that was really fun, you guys. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, so now's the point in the show where uh, where we give you a moment to uh, ask. Or to not to ask, like, hey, one, hey, Tom, why don't you ask Scott where he, where you can find more about him? Uh, Tom, where, <laughs> well, in, in case someone in, in listening right now does not know where the Podfather uh, uh, broadcasts his things, where uh, where can people find more of you? Well, oh, who are we ta who are we talking to? Me or Tom? Adam Curry, apparently, because he said Podfather. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. And Ricky Gervais also called himself that for a while. Now I'm very confused. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go first because, uh, truthfully, uh, it was uh, since Tom inspires me every day. I'll get out. I'll get my crap out of the way and we'll end strong. Okay, so here goes. Uh, Scott Scott Johnson on Twitter, actual Scott on Instagram. More importantly, FrogPants.com because all the shows and stuff are linked there. If you're interested in my artwork, you can find links to that stuff there as well. And uh, in particular, if you're following me on Twitter, this is a good weekend to do it because there will be a ton of content in and around BlizzCon starting tomorrow. Right on. Okay. Tom, where are you at? Uh, against the advice of all social media consultants, uh, my Twitter name is Ace Detect. So if you can figure that out, you can follow me there. Uh, all my podcasts and everything are listed at TomMerritt.com, two R's, two T's. And uh, the thing I'm most excited about is thanks to a joint effort of Daniel in Patreon, helping me find an email address, uh, some some cheering along and finding resources from BioCow and Sergeant Muffin and the coding mastery of Tinvec. Uh, we have daily tech headlines available on your Amazon Echo. You just have to say the name of Amazon Echo's trigger word, which I won't do in case I trigger somebody. Uh, add daily tech headlines to flash briefing and it's done. Boom. In there. Uh, that right is on. that is so cool that you've got that got that figured out like that. That's, that's yeah, awesome. I can't I can't thank everybody enough because it was a total team effort of one guy saying like, "Hey, you want to do this?" And I was like, "I would, but I don't know where to start. I don't know who I talk to." And he went and dug up an email address, which I emailed, and then I talked to Becky at Amazon, who deserves some credit for helping us out. Uh, and then Tinvec uh, got into the developer console and and made the script for us. It was awesome. That's. Again, Tim Vex making an appearance as just a totally awesome person making DC TV happen. Um, so we talked a lot tonight about uh, podcasting, and we've been many, meaning to mention this for a couple weeks, but it comes really prescient tonight. We actually have some feedback tonight of someone, some completely, I want to say anonymous, but some uh, some feedback from someone we don't know, which is always important. Um, expected. Yeah. Uh, Ken Ami which could be just Konami, uh, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> right. Reviewed episode beta 45. Wait, wait. So his review was up, down, up. <laughs> left, right, his left. Last name, his last name isn't K-O-D-E by chance, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 that, 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 yeah, that, that would have been awesome. Um, his name off. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, it's a throwaway show. Sad that such a typical podcast. 90% is like overhearing potty mouth people chatting making me think, why am I listening to this? And 5% something in the news and 5% vague discussion about the news item. 
utter waste of time. <laughs> wow, that's a, is very kind of them. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, Mr. Code, for the feedback. We we always appreciate that. It's not constructive. It's <laughs> so my yeah, question, it, my question to you guys. Now, this is our genuine feedback. This came on on archive.org actually. Uh, this is where we all upload all our stuff as per the guidance of one each Tom Merritt. Um, <laughs> so my my question to you guys is. When you initially started getting feedback, like direct feedback, and some of the feedback wasn't good, assuming that, of course, you know, your sultry voices received some sort of bad feedback, what was your initial reaction and how did it change your, your, your thought process on, on podcasting at all? Yeah, I'll be honest. In the early days of Buzz Out Loud in 2005, uh, I just liked to see that somebody had noticed we were doing it. Like, even if it wasn't great, I'm like, oh, okay, so somebody's there doing it. Uh, eventually, it became, you know, okay, don't take this too seriously. Not everybody's going to like everything. Obviously, some people just have an axe to grind. The fact that they took the time to react means that you're doing something right because they wanted to like it. Uh, and and over time, you know, I developed a, a lot of things that I've talked about uh, in a lot of different places, which are, are basically when you can respond to people who say this sort of thing, maybe they email or they put it on a forum, uh, respond positively and say, Hey, you know, I'm really sorry. You don't like the show. I understand it's not going to be for everybody, you know, but we well, if they have specific criticisms, I always say, well, I'll try to take these criticisms to heart. And I really mean that, uh, and, and put them alongside with all the feedback I get from everyone else. And sometimes it doesn't work, but more often than not, somebody comes back with a more mellowed response of like, well, what I was really upset as was X, Y, or Z. Yep. I, that's, I, that's been my experience as well. Um, I don't know. I think being able to, to, uh, be willing to engage with people when they have, uh, whatever their problem is and they, and they need to vent it, uh, even if it comes off as a little caustic at first and maybe mellows out later with a longer exchange or whatever is very helpful and meaningful just from a, I don't know, I understand you and you understand me sort of standpoint, even if you don't come to a, a sort of agreement that answers their specific problem or, or maybe even yours. Um, all of that being said, it helps to, it helps to grow, uh, you know, a couple layers of skin just to, it, because stuff's going to get said no matter what I've had some, it's very rare, but once in a while, somebody will just troll hard mm -hmm. and you got to have fun with it. Like if you can't, often my replies to the ones that are really trolling are, are a little goofy and self-effacing and it usually sort of uh, neutralizes uh, whatever toxic effect they were hoping for. Um, and if it goes beyond that, I'm a big fan of sort of muting or ignoring. So uh, my experience has been exactly like Tom's, that, that, that interchange and that chance to interface with people who listen to you and consume your content is valuable. And when it's not, uh, try to have fun with it, let it roll off your back and move on. It's not no big deal. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I appreciate both of your guys' responses on that because that's, I, I kind of feel the same way, and it, it's really nice to hear you guys say that. Uh, in fact, Amos and I are, are hugely critical of our own work, and I don't, I don't think any critic out there could be as harsh as we are to each other. Well, each other and ourselves. Um, and, uh, as, as producer and editor of this show, there, there's been more than one time that I've put down my headphones, walked away from this computer, cursing, <laughs> yelling, and screaming, and wishing I could edit it out, but knowing that it's live video when it was recorded, so it was out there anyway. Um, and that's because but, I'm, I'm typically the one putting my foot in my mouth. Right, but but one of the things that, that uh, kind of illustrates that, though, are, I guess our self-deprecation or whatever, is that we are still carrying a beta tag on our show, 100 episodes. Mm. We, we say that we are still in beta. Uh, it's kind of been our, our, our thing over the past 100 episodes. For one reason or another, we just we can't get over that hump. We can't get out of beta. And we were when we started the Countdown to 100 campaign, we were hoping that perhaps maybe 100 episodes in could get us out of beta, but we're... I don't know. We're, we're not sure if we've if we've achieved that yet. And mm -hmm. I just you know, I, I was wondering if you guys had any any sort of uh, opinion or, or guidance 
uh, if we should come out of beta like what? Now, now keep in mind being in beta has been our our safety blanket for any time anything that's screwed up and it's been our shtick like it, it's been i mean we I've, we've got t-shirts that say still in beta on the back of it you know it's it's not it's not just something <laughs> we're throwing in the wind it's been something we've embraced for these hundred episodes now now, and before the show, we kind of posed it to you guys. Like, you, you, you guys are our podcasting idols. We've never made no secret about that. Um, so, we well, posed- you know, I will, I will point out because in the early in the early goings of this show, like probably four or five episodes in, I asked Amos. I was like, when, you know, when are we going to drop beta? Like, we've already done a few episodes. Are, should we just go into you know full release now? And he's like, I don't know. There's certain things that I want to accomplish with the show before we come out of beta. And I was like what like get tom Merritt on the show so uh <laughs> wow I'm, I'm yeah that. <laughs> that's it only like, took you 100 episodes so, <laughs> so so if if you're not watching on, on video if you're listening to this audio wise uh i'm like i can see myself in the camera and i'm visibly blushing and i've actually met tom in person a few times like this is that was a little weird can't thanks um so we're gonna leave it up to you guys on uh <laughs> Uh, what do you think? Do you, do you think the show is uh, still in beta, or do you think we're actually uh, fully fleshed out? Are we a release candidate? What's going on here? What, what do you guys Tom, think? It, Tom, it feels like, you know, Gmail for so many years. Remember that? Yeah, no, I was just thinking of the same thing, uh, yeah. where, you know, you have, you have a, a polished product, and yet, for some reason, Google just kept Gmail in beta, and people were just wondering, like, when it's done, when, when are they going to let it out? Uh, at the very least, you guys, I mean, this episode is release candidate quality. Like this, oh, yeah. this, this is, is certainly open beta. You don't need no invite for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the way I'm thinking, Scott, and let me, let me know what you think here. Uh, you, they are tight top to bottom. They've got mm-hmm. defined segments. They know how to move along from piece to piece. Uh, this, this show is ready for release. And I would call it at least release candidate, if not out of beta, if they want. Yeah, but like I would say, Google, yeah, yeah. there may be other reasons to keep it in beta. <laughs> right. You've gone gold to take to, to use parlance from video games. Uh, mm-hmm. You may, you know, you may decide for yourselves that if you're out of beta with this episode, that you'll need a day one patch. That happens a lot. Uh, and day one patches could be many things in this in this particular metaphor. Uh, but I, you know, the way I'd look at it is you're out of beta, but it doesn't mean that development stops there. You're going to have a 1.1 and 1.2 and, you know, one day yeah. you'll be at version All kinds five of point releases. Sure. So, I mean, so and, it, yeah. and if you're like, here's the thing, you're, you're so ready to be released, but if you just want to keep the shtick going instead of still in beta, you could be beta by choice. Ooh. That that might be a new uh, new tagline there. Beta damn, by choice. Damn it, Tom. We do not need a new hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, you know that those are are incredibly kind words, and I I thank you guys so much for coming on our show. Um, not not only has it kind of been a goal of ours to get you guys on, but you guys were wonderful guests as we expected you to be. Uh, such a fun episode. Thank you guys so much. Amos, um, any, any final words before we start wrapping this up? Um, it's nice to, nice to get Tom Merritt on a podcast where we're not standing on the streets of, uh, of Austin. <laughs> not uh, that that wasn't fun, but no, yeah, no, that, I, I hear yeah, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, be, being half lit. I mean, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little different experience. Um, and Scott, you are one hard person to get a hold of, man. I'm just glad we finally got you on. Like this. You, you you do not make it easy to reach out to you on a private forum like you know it's easy to tweet to you or whatever but as far as like hitting you up with yeah. an email or whatever like you're you're pretty good at it and uh, I wish I was that good because some people already have my per my personal email. Uh- <laughs> well, you should you should see my inbox right now, but I'm I'm glad that we finally got it worked out and I'm glad that it worked out enough. I'm, I'm glad my internet held out enough that I could do this tonight and not miss it because uh, I've been very much looking forward to it. And, and Scott. Um, since we're actually doing the show, it's not pre-show now. Uh, official dates for Nerdtacular 2017? Nerdtacular 2017 or Nerdtacular X or NX, if you want to call it that. It's our 10th year uh, doing it, our 10th Nerdtacular, and it is technically 10 years old, or will be. Um, happens June 29th, 30th, and July 1st. It's that weekend. 
and uh, it's happening in Snowbird, Utah, like it has for the last couple of years, and it's going to be a big one. We're pretty excited about it. Hope to have a lot of frog panthers there, as well as new and old faces, and a bunch of other interesting announcements coming up soon, including ticket availability, even as soon as the end of this month, uh, and also information about the event itself. So keep your eyes on nerdtacular.com, actually, if you're looking for uh, the latest. And Tom, unless something drastic happens, I assume you're going to be there. Oh, yeah. Couldn't keep me away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom's right. a staple, man. He hey, has to be there. Hey, Kent, uh, where can people find more about you, man? Which one? Oh, of us? We, me? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kent. Didn't we do this? Did, no, no, we, yeah, oh, yeah. Kent. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Didn't we do this already? <laughs> don't, don't, don't mind my co host that doesn't like, yeah. listen to me. I it's guess cool. I, should, I guess I should tell people where I'm at. <laughs> uh, if you're on Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. Check me out there. Pretty much everything links out of there. If you're a beer guy like me, if you're a craft beer guy like me, go to ratebeer.com and look at, uh, well, look up username Del Noche. Then you can read all of my 500 plus beer reviews that are there. Uh, more coming all the time. Um, Amos, where? What about you? Where are you at? Um, similar to uh, to Mr. Tom Merritt over there, I have a Twitter handle and username throughout the internet that has no relation to my actual name. So at Ethan Kane. That's E T H A N C A I N E because I like making things difficult. Um, stems from playing Vampire the Masquerade, real, real life, uh, some some drama there. Um, and that uh, you can find me there on Twitter. You can find me there pretty much anywhere else that any any of the social media. Although Twitter is really the only thing I have time for. Um, I want to mention that we do have Patrick Beja on next week. It'll be a Thursday night show. It'll be a couple hours late because he's in Paris. So deal with it. And uh, you can always go to ritualmisery.com for all of our links, all of our show notes, and all of our episodes, and everything else that is Ritual Misery and awesome. So, um, of course, we, uh, we want to make sure that we give credit to Kevin McLeod. He allows us to use the Incomptech music that we use every show. And we'd like to thank you, the listener and the watcher and chat room, for participating in this show. For me, for you, for Tom, for Scott, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and gentlemen, that is a show. That is that is what we do. That's how that goes. Good show. Nice. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. That's that's a hundred episodes in the can. Congratulations! <laughs> Yay! <laughs>